Hello everyone, this is Jack Hasamon. Today I will be talking about plastic farming process. Same as before, we will try to address what, how, why, and what can go wrong. There are many processes in plastic farming. We will focus on just a few of them. Our raw material usually starts with plastic pellets. You may note that some processes can be used for TS, TP, or E. What does that mean? TS stands for thermoset plastics. It contains polymers that cross-link together. This messy cross-linking makes it difficult to untangle or reorganize polymer chain. Thus, TS has irreversible chemical bonds. It is also difficult to remelt and very heat resistant. An obvious example is melanin, which is used for plastic plates or bowls. Thermoplastics contain polymer chains with no chemical bonding, so we can remelt and recycle thermoplastics. These types of plastic are also in our everyday life. Polyethylene PE is used to make plastic bottles. Po polypropylene is used for food packaging. Polyvinyl chloride PVC is used for piping. Elastomers are many rubber, including synthetic rubber, polyurethane or PU. This type of material can recover to original shape after being stretched. So let's get started on our manufacturing process, shall we? Here is plastic extrusion process. Plastic pellets is fed to hopper. It will come down to screw. Since screw barrel is heated, plastic pellets will melt into liquid state with high pressure coming out through the die. This works the same way as aluminum profile extrusion. Here we have plastic profile extrusion. If we want to make plastic products that are not long profile, we can change the die to nozzle and attach the mold to the nozzle. Mold will allow liquid plastic to solidify into desired shape. This injection molding process is very similar to hot chamber die casting process. We need an injector in the mold to help pushing our products from the mold. Since thermoset plastics has high melting temperature, we need to heat the mold so that liquid plastic doesn't solidify too quickly. Most of the time, injection mold is very sophisticated. Engineers need to visualize how liquid plastic flows into and fill up the mold then how to separate more pieces to take the products out and removing material flashes. For example, in this picture, Mo has three plates. These plates will separate from each other during each injection cycle. Then, when they come back together, these three plates will have to be fitted exactly at the same position every time. We will not get into specific details here, but you can appreciate the fact that designing a mold is another class by itself. In this lecture, we will not go into the why the process works, though you can see what are the process parameters involved. Injection pressure, liquid plastic temperature during injection, and cycle time are the main ones. After being ejected from the mold, products are cooled down naturally. Part distortion may exist. Sometimes we adjust the mode to compensate for the distortion. Sometimes we adjust part design. Blow molding process is used to make plastic bottles or balance. We start by excluding plastic tube, which is called parison, into a mold cavity. Then we apply high air pressure into parison. Parison will expand and fill up the mold. Another approach is to perform the process continuously. We exclude the product from parison in step one. Then indexing table moves parison to blow molding station for step two. Blown bottle is moved to stripper station to remove flashes from the bottle. This figure shows only one bottle. Nowadays, many bottles can be processed at the same time. Another form of extrusion is plastic sheet or film extrusion. 
We extrude plastic into a flat die, spreading plastic into thin film. Sheet thickness can be adjusted by die lip. If we want to make plastic bag, we can extrude plastic film into cylindrical cross section. In this case, the die is cylindrical shape, and we need to provide air pressure to stretch the film outward. Once the plastic film cools down, we collect them into a wind up roll. Just to give an example, if you want to make plastic bag with 400 mm width, the fully blown plastic bags will have 800 mm perimeter or circumference. So the blown diameter is 800 over pi or 255 mm. Generally, plastic film will be blown 1.5 to 2.5 times of extrusion die diameter. So our extrusion die diameter should be in the range of 102 to 117 mm. Plastic film that we make, that we make from extrusion process can be formed in three-dimensional shape. This process is called thermoforming. Depending on the feature we want to create, we can use an upper or a lower die to make this 3D shape. We need to provide heat to soften plastic film so that it can be formed. Plastic boxes for sandwich are made with this thermoforming process. Very thick plastic sheet can be formed this way also. The next process is very popular for rubber. In compression molding, we prepare raw material into certain shape. We call this pre-shaped raw material a charge. We put a charge in a mold cavity. We provide a heat and force the charge into mold shape by a punch. This forming process takes some time as we need to slowly change the shape and cure material into final state. After the process, rubber is cool it could not be reprocessed or reshaped. When we want to make sure that the final product is properly filled, we may need to provide enough charge to create flashes. Sometimes the mold can be complicated. Having more than one piece to create specific feature in the product. For example, we have a die sliding on top of mold to assist part forming. This type of die is called undercut. If the part we want to make has complex shapes, we may need to extrude the charge into the mold. This is called transfer molding. To do this, we have three layers of mold. Transfer plunger is the top layer. The middle portion is the transfer mold. And the bottom layer is the mold itself. Transfer plunger forces the charge into the transfer mold. Raw material will fill up the bottom mold cavities. Please note that we can create complex part shape with this process. Another process is just to cast plastic. We melt plastic into liquid state and pour it into a mold, just like metal casting. Some electronic components, electric coils, could be put into plastic casting to make plastic encapsulation around the coil. The last process I want to mention is calendaling. Really popular process for rubber. We basically use many pairs of rolls to massage rubber into flat sheet. Then we will add fibers, steel wires to create conveyor belt. There are some other manufacturing process that I do not discuss here. And there are many features that we can create. This table only shows a small portion of what people have known at the time. It is constantly changing. We look at this table to get an idea of what can be done. And which process provide good equipment cost, production rate, and tooling cost. Well, this is it for this lecture. If you have any question regarding this lecture, you can Leave your question in our Google Classroom. I will answer them in class. Thank you and have a good day.